I want you to understand something. I came here, I prayed for three hours. I didn't prevail. Why? Because I didn't know the enemy I was dealing with. I was armed. I had the power, I had the authority. I invoke the name of Jesus. I invoke the blood. I invoke the word. I stood on the authority that Christ has delegated unto me according to Luke 10 19. And I invoke that authority and power and commanded the enemy to back off. But because I didn't know exactly the enemy that was dealing with the enemy was still there because if you don't know the enemy you are dealing with you can say enemy and it can be any we thank you because you are in the midst of us we have gathered in your presence to enjoy your glory. We have gathered in your presence to hear your word and what you have in stock for us. We have gathered in your presence to have an encounter with you. Father, we thank you that any time we gather, you show up. And we thank you that tonight you are in the midst of us. Father, use me as an instrument and a vessel to bless your people. And let them live here knowing that they are truly blessed. In Jesus' name. Amen. Give Jesus a clap offering. Give voice of triumph a round of applause. Hallelujah. Amen. Send your Bible to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, the verse number 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, the verse number 11. Corinthians is in the Bible. You know, let me start from 10. Take me to the verse 10. To whom ye forgive anything, I forgive also. Do you know we can just pause there and have service? You didn't hear it, and so I will repeat it. To whom ye forgive anything, I forgive To whom ye forgive anything, I forgive what? I want to repeat that again. It's very important. To whom ye forgive anything, no boundaries, not limited, not restricted, not confined. To whom ye forgive anything, I forgive also for if i forgave anything to whom i forgave it for your sakes forgive i it in the person of christ do you understand that it's very simple if i forgive somebody i'm not only forgiving the person but i'm forgiving the person because of christ so I'm not forgiving you because you apologized. Because they are certain things that is beyond apology. Is beyond apology. They are certain heads and certain pain. Apology doesn't cut it. That is why a lot of people find it difficult to let go. Because they become bitter. But the Bible is saying that when you forgive the person, you are not just forgiving the person. You are forgiving the person because of Christ. 
which means that if it is left with you alone, I won't forgive you. You are too bad. You are evil. But for Christ's sake, I have forgiven you. Next verse. The verse 10 is not part of my message, but I need to push it in there. Hallelujah. Amen. This is the main call. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us. For we are not ignorant of his devices. I want all of us to read it together by the count of three. I want to teach you something tonight that you will not forget the rest of your life. I want us to read together. One, two, three, go. Let Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. We are going to take it again by the count of three. One, two, three, go. Let Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. I want to title my message dealing with the enemy dealing with the enemy now that is the broad title of um, the series that I will be teaching on the broad title of the series that I will be teaching on in the next four weeks in the next four weeks how to deal with the enemy subtitle know the enemy which means that Tonight, I'm teaching on knowing the enemy. The broader title is how to deal with the enemy. Subtitle, know the enemy. So before you are seated, look at the person on your left and on your right and tell the person, know the enemy. Know the enemy. Know the enemy. Please, you may be seated in the heavenly places. I believe that the times that we are in, like I have said so many times, it is, it is a dangerous time that we are in. It is a time that Satan is unleashing all his arsenals, his weaponry, against us as believers satan knows that his days are numbered satan knows that pretty soon he will be cast into the bottomless pit and be chained and he will stay there for a thousand years and all his hearts of demons knows that their time is at hand and so they are doing everything and anything that they can possibly do to ruin our relationship with God. And how are they doing that? They are doing that by attacking us from all front, from every angle, from every level. And for us to effectively engage the enemy and to appropriate the defeat that he had over 2,000 years ago, we must know the enemy that we are dealing with. And God has commissioned us through his word to deal with the enemy. To deal with the enemy. Hallelujah. That is why when I see people who don't want to deal with the subject of demonology, it baffles my mind because as a believer it doesn't matter who you are and where you are coming from the day you give your life to Jesus you are engaged in battle right away whether you like it or not whether you are quiet or reserved or you are sociable or you are aggressive you are engaged in battle and this battle is with, with the forces of darkness. It's with the kingdom of the devil. Whether you like it or not. 
That is why God has given us the power, the authority. God has given us all the ammunition that we need to engage the enemy and to silence the enemy and to destroy the works of the enemy. No wonder Jesus said that the purpose why he came on this planet earth, the purpose of his manifestation so that he can destroy the works of the devil. The works of the devil. The works of the devil. And we have been commissioned to destroy the works of the devil. Now, I want you to pay attention to me because tonight I may be teaching and preaching to you at the same time. I want you to know, you cannot engage an enemy you don't know. You cannot engage an enemy you don't know and expect to win the battle. It is not possible. You cannot engage an enemy that you don't know how he functions, how he operates, and his weakness and his strength. You will not be able to win that battle. For you to win any battle, you must know the enemy. If you don't know the enemy, you cannot win that battle. Which means that it is not enough to know yourself. It is good to know yourself and to know the power that you possess and to know the authority that has been delegated to you and to also know the, the weapons that you have in your arsenals. It is good to know your position in Christ but it is not enough to deal to defeat the enemy. When you know yourself, you must know the enemy. And when you know yourself and you know the enemy, you can be engaged in thousand battles. You will come up on top. Because you can be strong. You can be powerful. You can be anointed. You can be gifted. And you can have all the ammunition. But if you don't know the enemy, you will not be able to use your weaponry effectively as you're supposed to. Let me give you an analogy. If I'm a, a hunter and I've gone into the bush to hunt, I have my gun and then I just start shooting. I'm, I'm shooting all over the spraying the gun all over the place even though I'm armed I have all the weapon I will not be able to kill any animal I will waste all the bullets I am armed I have everything that it takes to go back home with bush meat but I will end up going home with nothing because for me to have the bush meat, I must know where the animal is. And when I know where the animal is, what I am going to do next is to target the animal based on my knowing where the animal is. With that knowledge and understanding and revelation, when I leave the bush, I will be carrying some meat. But if I am armed, and I am just hoping that when I start shooting, one of the animals will just pass by and the bullet will hit that animal, I will be disappointed. You know the reason why? Because when they start hearing the sound of the gun, they go into hiding. Are you with me? Yes. They go into hiding. And so I am armed, but nothing to go home with. Because I don't know where the enemy is and I don't know the enemy. 
that brings me to my message the scripture that we just read project the verse 11 for me i will break it down for you and tonight i will teach you something that will blow your mind let satan should get an advantage of us for we are not ignorant of his devices i will explain it to you lest satan should get an advantage of us for we are not ignorant of his devices what it simply means this particular scripture what it simply means is this if you don't know the enemy the enemy has an advantage over you period if you don't know the enemy that you are dealing with that you are engaged in battle with the enemy has an advantage over you why you may be anointed powerful have all the weapons and the ammunitions but the enemy has an advantage over you why because you don't know the enemy and if you don't know the enemy it means that you don't know how the enemy operates how the enemy engages and the kind of weaponry that the enemy is going to use so the enemy has an advantage over you and so it is good to know the power you possess it is good to know that Christ has given us authority and power over every forces of darkness and demonic entity and over all the works of the enemy but it is not enough you must know the enemy that is why the bible says that we should not be ignorant of the devices of the enemy what it simply means is this don't engage the enemy when you don't know how he functions don't engage the enemy when you don't know how he operates don't engage the enemy if you don't know the enemy you will be a casualty when you know yourself and you know the enemy it doesn't matter how many battles you fight you will come up on top when you know yourself and you don't know the enemy you will become a casualty And the worst of it all is when you don't know yourself and you don't know the enemy, you will become imperial in every battle. You will succumb to every battle. Every battle you engage in, it will become disastrous for you. You will be defeated at any level and at every level. So it's important to know the enemy. That is why the Bible says, don't be ignorant. Don't be ignorant. Don't engage the enemy without revelation. Don't engage the enemy without understanding. Don't engage the enemy without having adequate information about the enemy. To engage the enemy, you must have adequate information about the enemy. I will give you a personal example. I didn't share this with my wife. There was a particular time in our lives where it was just misunderstanding between myself and my wife. We would not agree on anything. I came to the church at 12 midnight. I said, no, the demon is, some demon is lifting up his ugly head. I prayed for three hours on just that to deal with the enemy that is interfering and that is manipulating our environment I dealt with it I went home and things were getting bad and bad and bad and so I started saying in my head ah, but I just dealt with this thing for three hours how come that I'm not seeing any change and I'm not seeing the enemy getting out of my home so watch this I usually uh, write my manuscript and my books and study and meditate in the middle of the night in my study so I was in my study and I was writing a last chapter of a book 
So whilst I was writing the last chapter of the book, the Holy Spirit just whispered to me, lift up your head. When I lifted up my head, I just saw a dark shadow that was moving out of my study, was moving out. And I saw it clearly moving out. My eyes followed the dark shadow moving out. And the Holy Spirit told me, that is the enemy you are dealing with. I want you to understand something. I came here, I prayed for three hours. I didn't prevail. Why? Because I didn't know the enemy I was dealing with. I was armed. I had the power, I had the authority. I invoke the name of Jesus. I invoke the blood. I invoke the word. I stood on the authority that Christ has delegated unto me according to Luke 10, 19. And I invoke that authority and power and commanded the enemy to back off. But because I didn't know exactly the enemy that I was dealing with, the enemy was still there. Because if you don't know the enemy you are dealing with, you can say enemy and it can be any enemy. But immediately I saw that dark shadow leaving my office. And the Holy Spirit said, that is the enemy you are dealing with. I didn't even waste time. I didn't spend so much time like I spent previously. I was sitting in my chair and I said, you foul spirit that have entered into this house. I have just caught you. I exercise superior authority and I declare that you vacate from my home now in the name of Jesus Christ. Guess what happened? Immediately peace prevailed. Immediately peace prevailed. That is why there are so many people that are engaged in warfare and they pray effectively but they don't know the enemy that they are dealing with and so they don't get the desired result. You cannot engage the enemy and not know the enemy. First and foremost, you got to understand that this warfare and this battle is not physical. It's not physical. The devil is not fighting you physically. Even though the manifestations of his attack manifest physically, he is not fighting you physically. And so don't try to fight the enemy physically. You will lose the battle. If you try to fight the enemy physically, it means that you don't know the enemy that you are dealing with. You, you have no idea or any clue the enemy you are dealing with. That is why the Bible says, for the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal. They are not fleshly. They are not physical. They are spiritual. To engage the enemy, you must engage the enemy spiritually. You can engage the enemy physically. Which means that if the enemy, God forbid, is using her to attack me to deal with the enemy I have to go bypass her to deal with the enemy that is behind her pushing her manipulating her to attack me but oftentimes because we don't know the enemy we leave the enemy and we attack the personality that he is using we lose the battle Somebody is character assassinating you. Somebody is slandering you. Somebody is speaking cross words against you. We will rather attack the personality than attacking the spirit that has possessed her or the spirit that is behind that is attacking us. And so oftentimes, because of our ignorance, this is what we do. We don't talk to the person any longer. 
when the person is coming from left we go right and to us to deal with the person that way we think that we are dealing with the enemy you don't know the enemy there are some that resort into physical fights physical fights engage in physical fight if you engage the enemy physically you have lost the battle even before you started because the enemy doesn't fight us physically he fights us spiritually but it manifests physically if the enemy looks at a wife and want to attack her womb the enemy will not come physically and close the womb of that woman or remove the womb of that woman the enemy comes spiritually and removes the womb or seals the womb i have seen it so many times i have seen i have seen couples who are believing god for the fruit of the womb and there is nothing wrong with the two of them and they will even go to the doctor and the doctor will tell them that there is nothing wrong with you i don't i i, I don't see the reasons why you people shouldn't be having children sometimes it's either the woman's womb is blocked or sometimes the spermatozoa of the man doesn't enter into the woman why because when they have intimacy somebody comes sleep in between them i have seen it so many times i have ministered to so many people concerning that and so they have intercourse but where the seed is supposed to be going is not going somebody is taking it do not be ignorant of the devices of the enemy lest the enemy gains advantage over you to us believers we are not engaged in physical warfare we are engaged in spiritual warfare we are engaged in spiritual warfare and for you to excel, succeed, overpower the enemy, silence the enemy, stand on top of the enemy, and to put your feet on the neck of the enemy, you must know the enemy. You cannot function and operate in a vacuum. That is why God said, if you reject knowledge, I will reject your children. If you reject knowledge, I will reject your children. What does that mean? If you don't acquire information, if you don't study, if you don't show yourself approved unto God, I will reject your children and I cannot use you. You cannot walk in ignorance. You cannot walk around with empty head. You cannot be praying and engage the enemy and be in battle and warfare and not know what you are dealing with. The enemy is real. Let me tell you, Satan is real. Satan is real. The kingdom of darkness is real as you are. It is not the figment of our imagination. It is not something that we just imaginalized. It is not something that we just visualized that it is there. It is real. This battle is real. This warfare is real. That is why we cannot afford to engage the enemy without knowing the enemy. We must know how the enemy operates. We must know how the enemy functions. We must know what kind of weapons the enemy uses. Otherwise, we can't defeat him. Otherwise, we can't stop him. Otherwise, we cannot avert the works and the tactics and the tricks and the diabolical acts of the enemy. You must know the enemy. 
many years ago, I used to get worried and also faint when people talk about me, especially when they talk ill of me. I get so angry and furious. That why are these people talking ill of me? And some of them, they are people that have been there for them and have helped them in everything. So it bothers me so much. Until I realize that I am not dealing with persons. I am dealing with personalities without bodies. I am dealing with demonic entities and satanic entities. And the only reason why those people will speak ill of me is because they have allowed themselves for the enemy to come into them and to use them against me. And so if I want to deal with such situation, I don't deal with the person. I deal with the spirit that have entered into them. You must know the enemy. If you don't know the enemy, you will be going round in circles. Round in circles. You will not see victory in your Christian life. You will not see triumph in your walk with God. That is why you must know the enemy. There is no military force that goes into battle without first and foremost steadying the enemy. They steady. Just like you go to school and you study your books, they steady the enemy. They steady the enemy. You see, when Osama bin Laden was killed, you think that the special forces, the Navy SEALs that were sent, they just said, you people, you are so special, you are unique, you are too powerful. Go and kill Osama Bin Laden. No. No. After he was killed, we saw how they killed him. What did they do? They made a replica of his house. Where he lives. A replica, exact replica of his house, his compound, rooms, entrances, exits, everything. And they studied it. They studied it. And they studied everybody. And they were able also to fish out how many people lives in that house with him. That is what I call knowing the enemy. Knowing the enemy. And so when they showed up, Osama bin Laden wasn't prepared. Why wasn't, why wasn't he prepared? He wasn't prepared because he had no idea or any clue that anybody could find or locate where he is, especially the United States. Which means that when you know your enemy, 50% before the battle starts, you have already won. If I'm in a boxing contest and I know that my opponent, his right fist is strong, that is what he uses to knock people out. This is what I do. I make sure I dodge the right fist. I will do everything to dodge the right fist. As long as I do that, my opponent cannot knock me out because he is dependent on his right fist to knock me out. And so if he can't get me with the right fist, this is what happened. He gets frustrated. And when frustration sets in, fatigue also sets in. And it gives me an advantage to knock him out. You cannot fight a battle when you don't know the enemy. The enemy will kill you. So it's not enough knowing who you are in Christ. 
it's good to know who you are in Christ. But it is also advantageous to know who the enemy is. The devil will not show up slapping you. If he wants to slap you, he will slap you spiritually. <laughs> Disappointment doesn't come because the enemy comes physically and blocks you from taking whatever that you are expecting. He attacks you in the spiritual realm. He creates invisible barriers, invisible barricades. He creates invisible garrisons. He confines you. He limits you. He restricts you. And so you are not able to expand your court and enlarge your tentacles, tentacles because spiritually you have been confined. Physically, there is no confinement. You feel that you are free. You are at liberty. You have the emancipation to move around. But spiritually, you have been confined. And if spiritually you have been confined, there is no way that physically you will be able to excel and see progress. Because physically, there is nothing around you. Nobody is hindering you physically. Nobody is standing in front of you physically. Physically, you don't see any wall built around you. But the enemy that we are fighting, he specializes in spiritual warfare. And so to engage the enemy, you must engage the enemy spiritually. I have, se I have seen people and met with people who are struggling and they don't understand the reason why they are struggling. You know the reason why? Because physically, they have everything that it takes for them to succeed and to excel. Is it credentials? They have it. Degrees? They have it. Exposure? They have it. The know-how? They have it. But yet, they are static. But yet, they are immobile. But yet, they are constrained. They are restricted. And they are frustrated and perplexed. They have come to the place of hopelessness and helplessness. And they don't know what to do. Because to them, with all that they have, they should be excelling. Yes, physically you have everything that it takes. But there is an enemy that engages your destiny spiritually. There is an enemy that engages your ministry spiritually. There is an enemy that engages your marriage spiritually. There is an enemy that engages your advancement, your progress spiritually. And for you to see that physical expectation happening for you, you must know the enemy and deal with the enemy spiritually. You must know the enemy. And the enemy that is fighting us, that we are also fighting, this enemy fights spiritually. That is the first thing you must know. He fights spiritually. And so all these things that we do, I don't talk to him, I don't talk to her, and he, he stepped on my toes, and, and he spoke to me anyhow, and all that. You have not engaged the enemy. You have not. You have not engaged the enemy. You are not fighting the battle. Whatever you are going through will rather become very severe and fierce because the enemy doesn't fight us physically. He fights us spiritually. If you have the thought that the enemy fights us physically, you have missed it and you don't know the enemy that you are fighting. Secondly, you must also understand that this enemy is not a fool. <laughs> I want to repeat that. 
you must understand that this enemy he is not a fool because you see a lot of ir- erroneous teachings have made us to believe that the devil is some stupid guy and foolish guy who don't know what he is doing look at how smart you do how smart you are but look at the dumb things the devil make you do look at how smart you are look at how intelligent brilliant you are with all your credentials and degrees look at how the devil makes you do dumb things and you yourself when you come back after he, he has used you and left you alone you come back to your senses like, how can i do this and so we are dealing with an enemy that is intelligent we are dealing with an enemy that is smart and so for us to outwit the enemy we must be smarter than the enemy we must be smarter if we are going to outwit the enemy (laughs) we must be smarter than him we must be smarter the devil is not stupid the devil is not a fool he has been around for a very long time he has studied humanity very carefully very very carefully by what i call familiar spirits what is the purpose of familiar spirit the purpose of familiar spirit is this satan dispatches his demons and his agents and human beings that have come in covenant with him to carry out his agenda and purpose and assignment he assigned them to each and every one of us what is the purpose to monitor satan knows your daily routine Satan knows what time you get up and what time you go to sleep. He knows your itinerary and your schedules more than you know, even yourself. Why? Because he has been studying you, monitoring demonic surveillance. You are being monitored. You are being watched. You are being watched. Every step of the way. Satan knows if he touch your head, he knows how you are going to react. If he touch your feet or step on your feet, he knows how you are going to react. How did he know? He know by a careful study. Through what we call familiar spirits. That is why as a young man, Satan will not bring the ladies that you don't like. He will not. He knows you like the voluptuous. And so he will not bring you skinny. Never. It won't happen. He knows that you like shapely girls. And so he will not bring any girl that is shapeless. Because he knows that you will not be attracted to that person. How did he know? He knows that through careful study, your daily routine, he has studied your appetite. He has studied what you want and what you don't want. No wonder. Have you ever realized or have you carefully watched that anytime you are fasting, that is when people are inviting you to your favorite restaurant. People want to cook your favorite food. People want to give you your favorite juices for you to drink. Why? Because he knows that that is what you like. And with that, you will be tempted to break the fast. That is why there are so many of you. You said you are going to break the fast. As he said, ah, God knows everything. He knows everything. He knows everything. This time, he has answered the prayer and everything. Let me break it early. God, you are wonderful. You are wonderful. You are wonderful. Because you see, the food is staring at you. He won't break you what you don't want. He won't. He won't. So we are dealing with an intelligent spirit and an intelligent being. And so for us to outwit him, to outsmart him, and to engage him, and to have an upper hand over the enemy, we must operate on a level that the enemy is not operating in. We cannot operate on the same level with the enemy. We will not win the battle. 
That is why oftentimes, personally, when I'm dealing with the enemy and I am engaged in spiritual warfare and dealing with demonic forces and the forces of darkness and the kingdom of darkness and entities and, and principalities and powers and, and all these deities, I don't deal with them from their level. I deal with them from my level. What is my level? I am seated with Christ in the heavenly places. So I deal with the enemy from the heavenly perspective. And when I deal with the enemy from the heavenly perspective, it means that I have advantage over him. The person that is looking on you have advantage over you. Because for you to see the person, you must lift up your head. Before you lift up your head, there is a punch. You will be dazed. You will be dazed. So you must know the enemy that you are dealing with. So you have immigration problem. Your green card is not coming. Your citizenship is not coming. So you said, I'm going to deal with the enemy. And you are dealing with immigration officers. You are dealing with immigration officers. You are dealing with the person that interviewed you. You, you. you have missed out. Why? Because I have seen people who are qualified for their citizenship, who are qualified for their green card, and they are filed. And then me entered into the office when there was nobody there and took the file. And so the immigration officers that you are fighting, they are human beings. They are physical beings. They don't deal with spiritual stuff. For them to issue your citizenship or to issue your green card, they must see your file. Your file is not there. Because an enemy has taken the file. How do you get it? That is why, again, you must know that the enemy is not fighting us physically. The enemy is fighting us spiritually. You see, I was at the house with my family. I didn't see anybody there. I only saw my wife and saw my two boys and furnitures and books. I didn't know that there is a foreigner in my house. I didn't know that there is a stranger in my house who cannot be seen by the physical eyes but can only be seen by the spiritual eyes. I saw my house is in shambles. My house is chaotic. Everything is falling apart. And I am praying and not getting results because I don't know the enemy. That is the problem with the charismatic and the Pentecostal churches. That is why we pray a lot little results. And oftentimes, we tell us to know the enemy. We tell us to know the enemy. And you got to understand that there are different kinds of enemies and how they function and how they operate. And so, a prayer that I prayed and I defeated one enemy, that same prayer may not work for the other battle. That is why you must know the enemy. The prayer that I prayed and I killed the witches in my family and I killed the wizards in my family, that same prayer will not work against territorial spirits. It will not work against spiritual wickedness in the heavenly places. Why? Because there are hierarchies in the realms of the spirit. So the fact that you engage witches and you silence them and destroy their works and hurt their activity with your prayers doesn't mean that the same prayer
can hurt the activities of principalities and powers. It can't. Which means that every battle is determined by you knowing the enemy and develop a strategy against the enemy. You see, the reason why the Gulf War, how many of you have heard the Gulf War? Please, I want to know. Lift up your hands. How many of you have heard the Gulf War? Because I may be talking and it will just be stories that I'm telling. Gulf War. Now, during the Gulf War, I want to tell you something. I'm writing a certain book concerning, you know, spiritual commandos. That's the title of my book. And so I've made a lot of research about battle techniques and battle strategies and all that. So let me talk to you about something. During the Gulf War, you know Saddam Hussein attacked Kuwait and took the oil refinery, attacked Iran, defeated all of them. And the reason is because all these nations and countries, they were ill-prepared. And they were armed enough to engage Saddam Hussein. Now, when America decided to engage Saddam Hussein, they carefully, Pentagon carefully studied Saddam Hussein. And they realized that Saddam Hussein weaponry is based on tankers. Which is a primitive and colloquial strategy and weaponry to engage in battle in this 21st century. So what the Pentagon decided to do is this. Since he is using weapons based on tankers, they decided we are going to use weapons based on computers. So, weapons based on tankers is manpower. Somebody has to man it. Somebody has to work it. But the Pentagon was using computers. And they were seeing the enemy everywhere where the enemy is. They were using goggles that can see the enemy five miles away. Now, Saddam Hussein, military men didn't have the goggles. They are using the eyes. How far can your physical eyes see? And so, five miles away, they were being killed. Because they were using tankers, whilst the U.S. Allied forces were using weapons based on computers. That is why Saddam Hussein had to escape with great difficulty during the Gulf War. Escape with great difficulty during the Gulf War. The U.S. and the Allied forces are engaged in another battle, ISIS. The battle of the Gulf War and the strategy they use is different from this one. Why? Because it's a different enemy. The Gulf War, there were soldiers, there were footmen, they were on the grounds engaging the enemy. And they destroyed the enemy. And the reason why there were soldiers, there were military men, there were special forces on the ground was because Pentagon have studied the enemy and they have realized that with footmen we can defeat this man. But in the case of ISIS, they studied the enemy and they realized that these are crazy enemies. Who are suicide bombers? They don't care about their lives. And so, putting 
men on the ground is foolishness. It's not wise. And so this enemy, if we engage the enemy on ground, we will have a lot of casualties and a lot of our men will die. You know the reason why? Because they realize the strength of the enemy is the grounds. These people are not afraid to die. They are not afraid to die because they have been brainwashed. And they have made them to believe that if I die by suicide bombing, I will go to heaven and God has prepared 44 virgins for me. So in this your life that you are living, you are living for 44 virgins. What nonsense. And they believe it with every fiber of their being and so they will blow themselves. You see, they have been brainwashed and so they can kill themselves with many others and they don't care. And so Pentagon decided that, okay, this is how the enemy fights. We won't fight you from the ground. We will fight you from the air. And the enemy was almost, it's not almost, ISIS was pleading for America to fight them on ground. Begging to bring soldiers on ground that we won't fight you. We will fight you in the air. And so, you don't use the same strategy, the same skill, the same prayer to engage different enemy. If you are dealing with territorial spirit, there is a prayer you have to pray. If you are dealing with ancestral spirit, there is a way you have to pray. If you are averting, neutralizing, terminating, overturning generational cases, there is a way you have to pray. If you are dealing with demonic entities and principalities and powers and spiritual hosts of wickedness and satanic deities and entities, there is a way you have to pray. If you are dealing with witches and wizards and you are dealing with hexes and you are dealing with spells and awuja boards, there is a way you have to pray. That is why you must know the enemy. You must know the enemy. The strength of the enemy. The tactics of the enemy. The strategies of the enemy. Otherwise, you will succumb to the battle. You will be devastated. You will be destroyed. You will be annihilated. You will be extinguished. That is why you must know the enemy. Every sickness, there is a spirit behind it. If it has a name, there is a spirit behind it. So, dealing with the sickness, you must deal with the spirit. If you don't deal with the spirit, you have not dealt with the sickness. You have not. You have not dealt with the sickness. I have seen pretty beautiful girls whose marriage ring has been taken in the realms of the spirit hung somewhere on a tree. So you are here and you are praying by fire, by thunder, I release my marriage. By lightning, I release my marriage. I release angelic assistance, supernatural intervention. I deploy the services of the blood and I disengage and disentangle any forces of darkness that is fighting my marriage. Listen, you can use all the grammar. You won't get any results. Because you see, effect prayer, it is not in the lingo. <laughs> it's not in the diction. It's not in oratory. If it is, Hannah shouldn't get an answer. 
Because he prayed. But there was no oratory. There were no words. The Bible says she prayed. Her leaves were just moving. No wonder. Eli, who wasn't in the spirit at that time, look at her and say, you have been, you are intoxicated. You are drunk. Because he wasn't in the spirit. He was so much in the flesh. And the woman said, no, I am not drunk. I am speaking out of the abundance of, of my heart. She got to the place of groaning. She, she got to the place of travail. She got to the place of making sound and making noises and not speaking English and grammar and saying things. Is. And so for you to win battles and to win warfare and to come on top and prevail, it is not the arithmetic of your prayer. How many times you pray? It is not the grammar of your prayer. How beautiful your prayer is. It's the revelation by which you pray and engage the enemy. Know the enemy. Know the enemy. How does the enemy operate? Your life has been turned upside down. Your destiny has been turned upside down. Your promotion long overdue. Long overdue. It is so long overdue that when you say long overdue, you have to add another due. Long overdue, due. And you think that your superiors hate you. Your boss hates you. Your manager hates you. The CEO hates you. No. 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 In the first place, there is something that is whispering to the ears of the person that is supposed to promote you. Because you are better than all the others. How come that they are being promoted? And you are not being promoted. How can you sit down and think that it is physical? My boss doesn't like me. Yes, your boss doesn't like you, but there is something that caused it. And so go bypass your boss and deal with the thing that is instigating your boss not to like you and give you the promotion. If you deal with that thing, you have overcome. You have overcome. You have overcome. You have overcome. Listen. Somebody can be worrying you and troubling you at your workplace. And you can pray for the person to be fired. But it doesn't mean that you have dealt with the spirit. Because you can be moved to another department. You will experience the same thing. You can move to another organization or institution or company and experience the same thing. Because you just dealt with the personality that was being used but you didn't deal with the spirit. You see, Jezebel is dead but his spirit still lives on. <laughs> Jezebel died in the Old Testament but in the last book of Revelation they were still mentioning Jezebel <laughs> they were still mentioning Jezebel the spirit of Jezebel who calls herself the prophetess manipulating everybody curtailing everybody and every, bringing everybody under her influence so the person can be fired, but if you have not dealt with the spirit, you are going to experience the same thing. You are married to somebody who verbally abuses you and, and beats you. And you think it's him. It's not him. You can divorce that person and marry another man. The man will still beat you well, well. Abuse you well well why because it's not the person it's a spirit and so instead of you 
increasing the volume of your insults. Go on your knees and deal with the spirits. Instead of you standing there and say, today, touch me, you will see. Touch me, you will see. Spirits don't care about empty threat. They don't care. All that is empty. Empty. You are building castles in the air. It's empty. Instead of you going, beat me. You know, usually the women. Come, let me use you. <laughs> Lift up your hands like you want to hit me. Hit, hit me. Hit me. you wasting your energy your time and doing all this nonsense go into your closet take authority over the spirit that has occupied that man that has possessed that man that causes that man to verbally abuse it arrest that spirit command that spirit this is my house this is my home this is my marriage this marriage is blessed this man that god gave to me he is blessed to we will fulfill our purpose and our destiny. Satan, you have no place in this place. Get out! Get out! Get out! You spirit of abuse, foul spirit. Darkness has nothing to do with light. There is nothing in common. Get out! Live here. Vacate this place. I evict you by the authority in the name of Jesus. Live here. Let peace, tranquility, and harmony rule and reign over this house and over this family, over this relationship, over this marriage. That is how you deal with it. But if you have sharpened your tongue like a kitchen knife, you say today, when he comes, hmm, I will cast him out. Hmm. Look at your face. Look at this. One time I met couples. The woman said, Pastor, I have cursed him and insulted every part of his body. I don't know which part of the body I should test. <laughs> you have done all that and the problem is there. The problem is still there. You have told him how his head is like cucumber. <laughs> oh yeah and the problem is still there you have told him about his years goat the problem is still there you have told him kiss him the nose the problem is still there the eyes the chin the body every part you you have done everything and the issue is compounded you know what you are not dealing with the issue because the issue is not physical the issue is spiritual how come in the job you get the longest you have stayed three months three months when it is three months something will happen strange will happen you lose the job you think it's physical it's not physical it's spiritual you don't deal with it physically you deal with it spiritually for the weapons of our warfare they are not kana they are not kana do not be ignorant of the devices of the enemy do not be ignorant do not be ignorant how the enemy operates and who the enemy is. The person you think that is the enemy is not. The person sitting beside you is not the enemy. Stop looking at him or her some way. So Pastor Grant comes to church on Sunday. He gets behind the pulpit like I usually do. 
walk up to three people tell them they are blessed and there is nothing the enemy can do about it and the person that is sitting right here you don't shake their hands because you have the notion and Satan has planted a seed in your head that she is the enemy so you walk and then you go and greet and you think you are dealing with the issue you are not dealing with the issue especially if the person is even a witch that will make him more angry <laughs> make him more angry he will say tonight I will meet you when you go to bed I will meet you I've had people who have come to me that they went to bed when they got up flogging max I'm telling you max all over max all over one woman who is not part of this ministry book an appointment to come and see me in my office he said pastor any time I go to bed it's like they are just waiting for me to close my eyes they begin to flog me she was wearing long sleeves she pulled up her sleeves Sammy I, I was shocked I was shocked Max Max she was going to pull up this one I said no it's enough it's enough in this world of technology I don't know who is videoing and they will put it on the internet pastor grant was doing something in it i said it's enough the hand one i have seen it i asked her are you sure nobody physically beat you and floyd said no i saw it in my dream when i got up all these marks <laughs> not be ignorant don't walk in ignorance don't walk in ignorance you see the church has walked in so much ignorance that we make a fool of ourselves that is what has caused division we are not talking to each other we are not standing up for each other we are not standing in the gap for each other because satan has made us to believe that your fellow sister, your fellow brother is the enemy. And he has left himself out. And guess what? He is standing somewhere and he's laughing. <laughs> you need to see the laughter of Satan. <laughs> that is what he's doing. And we are fighting each other, killing each other, slandering each other, pulling each other down. And he is outside laughing. The reason why Jesus on his earthly ministry dealt with the enemy severely and effectively and silenced the enemy and shut down the kingdom of darkness was because he knew the enemy. Why? Jesus cast out a demon, the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the scribes. Pharisees, far to see. Sadducees, sad who were so ignorant so 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 ignorant they don't understand the things of the spirit and they don't understand the rules of engagement when they saw him cast out demon they said he has cast out the demon by the spirit of Beelzebub listen to the response of Jesus he said a kingdom divided against itself shall not stand you know why he said that because he knows the enemy and he knows that the enemy his kingdom is not divided against himself he knows the enemy and he knows that his kingdom is well organized it's not divided it's not divided and so a demon cannot cast out a demon 
So those who have been in the world and they have consulted mediums and medicine men, medicine women and witchcrafty and all that and they go to one and he said this one gave me problem. I'm going to the other one to give me the solution. <laughs> they are connected. Say he's coming. You. <laughs> yes. He is coming. And the other one said, don't worry, I know. Let him come. Let him come. Ignorance. Ignorance. You must know the enemy. You must know how he operates. You must know how he functions. His strategies. His tactics. Who is he working with? Who is he working with? For instance, you are dealing with witchcraft. Right? You are dealing with witchcraft. So, said so this person has been assigned against me. So you kill. <laughs> no, you are not being assigned against me. <laughs> it's just an analogy. <laughs> but I think you were assigned when you were dealing with me when <laughs> you were on an assignment. You look at your pastor, your pastor is vomiting all over the place. You don't care. <laughs> you were on assignment. <laughs> Amen. But I will come back. Don't worry. I will come back. So, where was I? Yes, you are dealing with witchcraft. <laughs> you are dealing with witchcraft. And you say, oh, this woman has been assigned against me. So, you deal with the woman. You are ignorant. Witches operate in companies. So it's not her alone. They are this. A coven is not made up of one witch. A coven is made up of 13 witches. Six wizards, six witches, they have their head. That they make an account to. So, dealing with one person, I've not dealt with the whole witches. If you have to deal with the witches, you deal with the coven. Because if you kill one, they will send another one. If you kill that one, they will send another one. You may end up killing all of them, but by the time you finish, you are weary. You are tired. You are exhausted. Exhausted. And there may be better things that you should be dealing with. But because of this, you don't have the time to deal with the other stuff. So, if I'm dealing with a witch, I am dealing with that witch and the coven where he or she is coming from. I am burning all of you into ashes. If I burn all of you into ashes, then I know that the assignment that you are on cannot prevail against me because all of you, you are dead. Know the enemy. Don't be ignorant of the devices of the enemy. Don't be ignorant. Don't, don't be ignorant of the devices of the enemy. I have seen smart, intelligent people who goes to write exams. They don't pass. They know the answers. They are smart. They have studied and everything. But they keep on failing and failing and failing and failing. And people come to them. They will teach them the same thing. They will go. They will pass. <laughs> they will pass. When you see stuff like this, you must know that there is an enemy behind. You deal with the enemy. I have seen people who have gone into an exam or and they have written an exams and they knew that they chose the right answers. They came out excited when the results came. They have failed. Why? Because whilst they were putting in the right answers, there was somebody standing beside them changing the answers spiritually that they couldn't see, but the person is changing the answers. I have seen people that battleless where they are supposed to use four years, they sometimes use ten years. 
and it is not because they are damp and they are blockheaded is because there is a force there is an enemy that is working against them and the enemy has purpose and determined that this area of their life they will not excel you must know the enemy and deal with the enemy effectively 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 you know you see people say oh i wasn't disciplined enough in the last exams i wasn't disciplined enough so you think that your solution is discipline oh i didn't study enough so you burn the midnight oil studying the whole night no sleep no sleep and satan said go on go on go on so guess what happened at the time of the exams <clears throat> because you have not slept so the time of the exams, satan said yes this is the right time to strike so you are seeing all the questions two 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 you are not seeing it clearly because you are sleeping you are sleeping it is not a discipline it is not because you have not studied enough there is an enemy behind the scenes deal with the enemy behind the scenes you will prevail to deal with the enemy you must know the enemy rise on your feet In the next four weeks, we will be dealing with this topic, how to deal with the enemy, how to deal with the enemy. Because I, the, I am sick and tired of people coming to me and saying that, Pastor, I have prayed, I have fasted, and I'm not seeing anything. I, I am sick and tired of it. It can no longer continue. It cannot continue. It can continue. It can continue. This can no longer continue. It can't continue. We must get results. The scriptures must become real to us. What we read, it must become real. It must become real. We must have testimonies. We must have breakthrough. The Bible says that we are more than conquerors. We are more than conquerors. We are more than conquerors. Matthew 10 1 says that he has given us power over all sickness and over all evil spirits. Said the same thing in Luke 9 1. So we are not ignorant. And when he had called unto him, his 12 disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirit to cast them out and to heal all manner of sicknesses and all manner of diseases. Give me Luke 9. 1. And so we are equipped. It's not like we are not equipped. We have the power. We are well equipped. Then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over all, no some, all devils and to cure diseases. And so the problem is not that we are not equipped. The problem is not that we have not been empowered. The problem is not that we don't have the ammunitions and we don't have all the weaponry in our arsenal. The problem is that we don't know the enemy. We are ignorant. We have less information about the enemy. And the enemy is capitalizing on it. Capitalizing on it. And because of our ignorance, look at yourself right now. You are all by yourself. Good friends, good people God has sent into your life to assist you, to help you to where you are going to. They have all left you because you are suspicious of everybody that is around you. This one is a witch. This one is a wizard. This one has been sent. This one is a principality. This one is a power this one is a snake this one is a lizard this one is a turtle this one is a frog this one is that i cut 
myself. Goat, goat, goat. Cut myself. Giraffe, cut myself. You are all by yourself. How are you going to fulfill your purpose? Because God designed destiny in a way that you can only fulfill it through destiny helpers. You can't do it all by yourself. God brings people in your life to take you to the next level, to take you to the next dimension, to take you to the next realm, to help you come up. And everybody is a suspect. Somebody look at you like this. So, <clears throat> You won't believe it. When she was looking at me, I was seeing the devil in the eyes. The devil. The devil in the eyes. The devil. You cut the person off. And then the devil look at you and he's laughing. <laughs> it has succeeded. Okay, this one. All of a sudden, the devil puts something on your eyes. You see, you see homes. <laughs> on your other destiny helper. So, I didn't know that she is a witch, hey, a wizard. Hey, cut off. You are all by yourself. Who do you talk to? Who do you speak to? How do you come up there? And guess what? God will not come down and help you to come up. He uses human beings. The door that you are praying for, that issue open. You think that an angel will come and open the door? It doesn't function like that. When you pray, God, open this door for me. Open that door for me. What God does is this. He speaks to somebody who is already in the door to open it for you to come in. And how does he do it? He does that by connecting you, bringing the person into your life. So if that person also is a wizard, how do you enter into that door? This is the problem especially of charismatic churches. This is the major problem of charismatic churches. Suspicious. And it is because we are not spiritually inclined. We think that we are so spiritual, but we are not spiritual. Oh, you see, uh, uh, hey, the hair, uh, you would like a witch. If her style if her, her style identifies people as witch, I'm telling you, you that you are calling the other person that is a witch, you, you are number one. Because your hair style is horrific. It has got nothing to do with all these things. That is why we are missing it. We are missing it completely. 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 Let's know the enemy. And deal with the enemy effectively. Let me tell you, the amount of time that you are spending on the enemy, you won't spend that time. The amount of energy you are spending, you won't spend that kind of energy. I don't waste time on the enemy. Gone are those days, the days of ignorance, where you are spending hours dealing with the enemy. No. I fish out who the enemy is, and I give orders and instructions. I give the enemy boundaries and limitations. You can't cross. If you cross, you are dead. But you can't do that if you don't know the enemy. You must first and foremost know the enemy. I've ministered to people where they, in the realms of the spirit, they have throw pee, pee. Urine at them. But physically, nobody has thrown urine at you. Who would dare physically throw urine? It's not possible. So you don't know what is happening. But in the realms of the spirit, they have bathed you with it. And so you are wondering why everybody that gets close to you leaves you. Because you smell. And they smell. You yourself. You don't smell it. It's only the people that comes to you that smells it. Why? Because it is designed to make you alone to stand and to sack everybody from you. The things of the spirit is deep. The things of the spirit, you cannot intellectualize it. It's no logic. You can't use logic. Is deep, 
surgery very deep very deep one day a lady a young lady asked me pastor it looks like all the ugly women are getting married all the beautiful women are single <laughs> and I told her I don't know what answer she was expecting from me but I told her that is the first revelation to know that this is not physical this is not physical it's spiritual it's spiritual listen we can have a marriage seminar love and marriage relationship and teach everything oh oh, oh dress well do your hair you know be in shape and everything yes it's all part of it but let me tell you you can smell good where your cologne or your perfume can be smelled a mile away your hair can be so nice that everybody thinks and look at it your dress can be so gorgeous and you can be looking so flamboyant and nothing will happen <laughs> nothing will happen you know why because if the enemy prevails against you spiritually it doesn't matter what you do physically it doesn't matter it doesn't matter it doesn't matter it doesn't matter what you do physically if the enemy robs you spiritually physically somebody can give you 20 million that 20 million <laughs> eh? cash no check cash it's a carry it you will still remain the same the money will finish and you cannot even give an account of the money and where the money went to because this criminal and this robber is not robbing you physically is robbing you spiritually know the enemy and know how to deal with the enemy stubborn children deal with the spirit of stubbornness stubborn husband stubborn woman deal with the spirit of stubbornness deal with them it's not your yelling and your screaming that will change anything you can yell you can scream all you want we shall not be moved just like a tree planted by the rivers of water we will not be moved deal with the spirit you will see the child sober submissive obedient obliging to instructions and guidance and directions hallelujah how many of you understand what i'm talking about now that you have clapped and you have understood get yourself some space look for a space it's time for prayer look at somebody and tell the person it's time for prayer find space find space this sanctuary is big it has space for everybody find space <laughs> they are throwing fiery darts at you and you are throwing insults it will not work it will not work if they are throwing fiery darts at you take a stand in the spirit throw fires at them decree the way tell the enemy where he belongs put him where he belongs Silence the enemy. Each and every one of us here, there is an enemy that you are dealing with. There is an enemy that is attacking you. There is an enemy that is contending with your life and contending with your destiny. 
there is an enemy that will not let you have rest there is an enemy that will not let you have peace there is an enemy that will make you have sleepless nights you must deal with that enemy today deal with that enemy today is is it an enemy concerning your business your marriage your family your children your finances your calling your ministry what is it your business your promotion your elevation your happiness your joy your glory the manifestation of your prophecy listen now you know that the enemy is not physical the enemy is spiritual hold that enemy at ransom single-handedly and deal with that enemy because you see the enemy is powerful but we are all powerful the enemy is mighty but God is almighty I always say this if the enemy cannot win it means you cannot lose and if you cannot lose the enemy cannot win that tells us the power that we are carrying we are not engaged in battle and spiritual warfare from the perspective of defeat this battle is already won by Christ on the cross all we need to do is to remind the devil of the defeat and put him in his place and tell him don't try it don't dare I am not ignorant of your devices of your works of your activities of your plans are you ready to pray are you sure you are ready to pray now this prayer is going to be a marathon this prayer don't look at somebody before praying do you understand what i mean usually people come to prayer meetings like this and they are looking at somebody oh he's looking at me you think i'm crazy let me be diplomatic listen here in fact from here here the person holding the microphone there is no me i am crazy and if you are listening to me you are crazy also and so don't look at somebody and think that the person will say i am crazy the person you are looking at that you think will say you are crazy that person is also crazy all of us we are crazy for jesus christ we are mad we have gone cuckoo for jesus so don't look at anybody before praying and don't forget the person you are looking at doesn't know what you are going through the person you are looking at and you are trying to please that person has no idea or any clue the attack and the onslaughts of the enemy against your life pray as if you are by yourself you and god alone the way you will pray aggressively intensively travail agonize and hold the bull by the horn and say god until my request is granted i'm not living i want you to pray like that are you ready yes. now before we start praying i want you to look at somebody and tell the person stop looking at me with that kind of look Do you know what we are doing? We are demolishing and dismantling every argument. <laughs> Hallelujah. Are you ready? I want you to clap your hands. Don't stand at one place. I want you to move and begin to pray. Deal with that enemy. Deal with that force. Deal with that entity that have been contending with your life, your destiny, your progress, your advancement. Deal with that enemy. There must be a shift. There must be a change. There must be supernatural release. Open your mouth and pray. Mataka 
Rakapahayas. Rakapahaya. I want to hear you. I want to hear you. I want you to push in prayer. I want you to be aggressive. That miracle must be released. Any power, any force, any demon, any entity, any personality without bodies and personalities with bodies that is holding on to your miracle and breakthrough, that is holding on to your progress and your advancement. We are holding the activity of the enemy and we are declaring that the enemy will not prevail. Matakapahaya. Hey, Shakapahaya. Maruakaposaka. Matakapiria Kapea. Rakapolia Sakaya. Marakapantakapahaya. Malia Kapo Papaya. We are engaging them from the heavenly perspective. We are engaging them from the heavenly realm. And we are decreeing in the name of Jesus that the works and the activities of the enemy shall not prevail. It shall not prevail. It shall not prevail. It shall not prevail. We demolish every argument. We dismantle every fiery dart of the enemy and every wiles of the devil. We declare in the name of Jesus Father divide their tongue and break their ranks. Divide their tongue and break their ranks. In the name of Jesus. Let that which they have plotted. Let that which they have planned. Let that which they have orchestrated. Let them become victims of their own diabolical plans. Let the pit that they have dug for us. Let them become victims of their own pit. In the name of Jesus. Matakapahaya. Rekaposaka. Rekapuliakaposaka. Matuakabepapaya. Rekapuliakabanta yekapaya. Rekapuliasakaya. Matuakabopapaya. Rekamantikibiliakapaya. Rekaposaka. Rekapuliakabepapaya. Rekapuliasakaya. Matiakabopapaya. Rekapantikibiliakapaya. Rekapuliakabopapaya. Rekapantikibiliakapaya. Rekapuliakabupapaya. Rekapuliakabupapaya. Every satanic projections. Every demonic projections. Every declaration of the enemy. Every talkings of the devil. Every talkings and symbols that the enemy has invoked against our lives. Against our destiny. Against our marriages. Against our advancement and progress. Against our calling and ministry. Against our lifting. Against our peace and tranquility and harmony. In the name of Jesus. Against our our glory father we superimpose we superimpose the blood of Jesus we superimpose the blood of Jesus over every activity of the enemy over every onslaught of the enemy we intercept the walls of the devil we block the walls of the enemy in the name of Jesus Manifestation of the goodness of God in our life in the power that is delaying the progress of our lives. Father, we bind their activities, we bind their activities, we hold their activities, we neutralize their activities, we dilute their activities, we render it non effect by the blood of Jesus Christ. Let them be confused. of the enemy we overturn the tables 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 of the enemy matia kabaya rakabata kaha rakapolia sakaya marua kabeta yeah i declare let destinies be released tonight let destinies be released tonight let ministries be released tonight let 
let marriages be released tonight let promotions be released tonight let companies let businesses let organizations institutions let it be released tonight tonight let there be a divine and a supernatural manifestation of prophecies and of that which have been written of us in the volumes of the book and in the scrolls of eternity in the name of Jesus delayed glory delayed advancement delayed promotions father we lose it we lose it we release it sit and take your hands off take your hands off lose your hold and your grip in the name of Jesus we deploy the sword of the spirit we cut off anything that is not of God in the name of Jesus we declare an open heavens an open heavens maraka pantaya rekabuli akabeha rekabosaka rakabika yokabeha rakabuli akabopapa rakabiri akati akaba rekamoli ikimiri akata rakabuli akabopapa rakabuli akabita ye rakabiri akati rakabuli akabantaya rakabuli asaka maraka pantaya kapa In the name of Jesus Christ, Maraka Pantaya, Rocco Posaka, Matia Capolia Capa, Racapolia Capantaya. I command every spell to be broken, every spell break, 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 break. In the name of Jesus, Maria Capopa, Rocco Polia Capipa, Racamanti Capilia Cata, Racapolia Saka, Matua Capepa. I bring the captivity captive. I bring the captivity captive in the name of Jesus. I demolish every satanic imagination that exalts itself above the knowledge of God concerning our lives, concerning our family, concerning our health, concerning our children, concerning our schools, education, career, concerning our ministry calling, concerning our work with God, our relationship with God, concerning our finances and job and businesses. In the name of Jesus, I bring it to the captivity to the obedience of Christ. I bring it to the captivity to the obedience of Christ. In 
in the name of Jesus, I command every closed heaven to be open. I command every closed heaven to be open. I remove the invisible barriers. I remove the invisible walls. I remove the barricades. I demolish and dismantle and annul every satanic garrison that has confined us in the name of Jesus. Matia Kaboni Akapaya. Rakabuli Akabe Papaya. Rakapoli Asaka. Rakabo Shaka. Matua Kabe Papaya. Rakapuli Akabantaya. Rakapuli Akabo Papaya. Rakabanti Kibiri Akata. Rakapuli Asakaya. Rakabo Papaya. Rakabanta Kapaya. Rakapoli Akabi Papaya. Rakamanti Kibili Akapaya. Rakapoli Asakaya. Matua Kabo Papaya. Rakapuli Akabanta Yeha. Rakabo Papaya. Rakabanta Yakapaya. Rakapoli Akateha. Rakapoli Akataya. I declare may immigration document be released. Let it be released. Let it be released. Let it be released. Let there be a manifestation of the expectations of the righteous in the name of Jesus. Maranka Pantayeha. Rakapo Shaka. Rakabuli Akabo Papaya. Rakabanti Kibiri Akataya. Rakabuli Akabo Papaya. Rakabuli Akabe Papaya. Rakabanti Kibiri Akataya. Rakabuli Akabo Papaya. Rakabuli Akabo Papaya. Rakabuli Akabo Papaya. Rakabuli Akabo Papaya. Rakabita Yeha. Rakabuli Akabo Papaya. Rakabanti Kibiri Akataya. Rakabuli Akabe Papaya. Rakabuli Asakaya. Rakabeta Yeha. Rakabuti Kibiri Akataya. Rakabuli Akabo Papaya. Rakabuli Akabo Papaya. Rakabuli Akabo Papaya. Rakabuli Asaki Papaya. Rakabuli Akabo Papaya. Rakamanta Yakapaya. Rakabo Papaya. Rakabuli Akapaya. Rakabita Yakapaya. Rakabo Saka. Mati Akabo Papaya. Every forces of darkness that have tied you down, that have tied your marriage down, that have tied your destiny down, that have tied your life down, that have tied your ministry down, that have tied your job down, that have tied your advancement down, that have tied your children down, that have tied your family down. I declare supernatural release, supernatural release, supernatural release, supernatural release, supernatural release. I overcame. I overcame every declaration of the enemy, every decrease of the enemy. I overcame. I overcame. I overcame. I overcame. I circumvent. I sabotage. In the name of Jesus, Malia Kapantaya. Every satanic coalition, every satanic allegiances, every satanic alignment. I destroy. I destroy. I destroy. By the blood of Jesus, by the blood of Jesus, Maria Cabanta Yeha, Rocopoli Acabaha, Racapoli Acabopa, Recabanta Yacapa, we take our stand in the heavenly places, we take our stand in the heavenly realm, and we declare you are not moving any feather, you are not moving any feather, you are not moving any feather, Maria Cabanta, Lia Cabopa. Rekabo Sakaya, Rakabanta Yeha, Rokopoli Akabaya, Rakabiri Akato Kabeha, Rekabuli Asakaya, Matu Akabo Papaya, Rekabuli Akabaya, Rekabanti Akabaya, Rakabuli Akabeha, Rakabo Papaya, Rokopoli Akabeha, Rekabanta Yekabaya, Rakabuli Akabo Papaya, Rakabuli Akabeha, Rakabiri Akate Kabaya, Rekabuli Rakapuli akababaya, rakapuli akababaya, rakapiri akate kabeha, rakapuli akababaya, rakapiri akabanti kibili akate, rakapuli akababaya, rakabanta yakabaya, rakapuli akababaya, rakabanti kibili akabeha, rakapuli akababaya, rakapiri akababaya, rakapuli akababaya, rakapuli akabanta yeha. Rakabuli akabo papa, rakabanti kibili akabe, rakabo papa, rakab. 
Rika yeh, Rika puli akabe baba, Rika puli akabe baba, Rika puli akabe kayo kabe, Rika puli akabe kabe, Rika puli akabo baba, Rika puli akabe, Matu akabe, Matu akabe, Rika manta yeh, Rika pele akabe, Rika puli akabo baba, Rika puli akati akabe, Rika puli akabo baba, Rika manta akabe. That which they have swallowed, that which the serpent has swallowed, that which the venomous beast has swallowed, may he vomit it. Let them vomit it. Let them vomit the treasure. Let them vomit the treasure. Let them vomit the riches. Let them vomit the blessings. Let them vomit the destinies. Let them vomit the promotions. Let them vomit it now. Let them vomit it now. Let them vomit it now. In the name of Jesus. Let not their hands perform their enterprise. Let them be disappointed in their craftiness. In the name of Jesus. This battle is ended. This battle is over. This warfare is over. In the name of Jesus, we prevail on every side. We overcome on every side. We triumph on every side. We win on every side. Rakabosha, 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 Rokoposa, Matua Kabeha, Rokopolia Kabeha, Rekabiria Kapaha, Rakabulia Kabeha, Rekabota Yeha, Rakabalia Kapopapa, Rekabulia Kabeha, Rekabulia Kapopapa, Rekabulia Saka, Matua Kabeha, Malia Kabeha, Palia Kabeha, Rokoposa Kabaha, Marua Kabeha. Rakapilia Kabo Papa, Rokopolia Kabe Papa, Rakapulia Kabe Papa, Rakapiria Katia Kabe Papa, Rokopolia Kabo Papa, Rakapulia Kabo Papa, Rakamantaya Kabe Papa, Rakapolia Kabo Papa, Rekapulia Kabe Papa, Rakapilia Kate Kaba, in the name of Jesus. Jehu. Vice your name. Quaristers, take it up. Bring me. Great in battle, Jehovah is your name. Jehovah is your name, Jehovah is your name, Jehovah is your name, Jehovah is your name, oh mighty warrior, wait in battle, Jehovah. Jehovah is 
yourself in. I want you to know that you are an overcomer. You are a victor. You have prevailed. You will come up on top. There is a light at the end of the tunnel. You will give your testimony. Your miracle is assured. Your breakthrough is assured. Your favor is assured because the Lord is the one that is fighting your battle. He is mighty in battle. He is mighty in battle. He is mighty in battle. He has never lost any war and he has never lost any battle before. That is the God that we are serving. That is the God. He is, he is glorious. He is glamorous. He is an awesome God. Just when you think that there is no hope, he steps in and takes over. You are here, you feel like there is no hope. You are here or you are watching me and you feel like there is no hope. You are getting ready actually to quit. You are getting ready to, to give up. You are getting ready to say, I've had enough. I don't want to pursue it any longer. I don't want to follow through any longer. The devil is a liar. 
the devil is a liar this battle is not yours this battle is the Lord's this battle is his the only reason why the battle has become so fierce is because something is about to manifest that had never manifested in your life before something you have been waiting for something you have been crying for something you have been believing God for God is about to release it into your hands and the enemy is doing everything and anything for you not to take it for you not to come into it but the devil is a liar he is the mighty warrior Jehovah is his name El Shaddai is his name Elohim is his name El Gibo is his name Sebaot is his name Mikadashkem is his name Jehovah Jireh is his name Jehovah Shammah is, is his name his name is Jehovah Nisi he is our banner he is our banner and if he is our banner there is no power there is no spirit there is no any entity that can circumvent or sabotage that which he has for us they will not be able to penetrate we are insulated with the power of God we are insulated with the Holy Ghost fire and they will not be able to infiltrate and touch anything that God has delivered into our hands lift up your hands I want this song to be your prayer I want this song to be your declaration. I want this song to be your proclamation. I want this song to be your announcement to the kingdom of darkness that he is a mighty warrior. Jehovah is his name. Lift up your hands. Jehovah is your name. Jehovah is your name. Jehovah is your name.
happening now as we are praying something that the Lord just opened my eyes and I've been looking at it and watching it is so beautiful it's so glorious so beautiful and so glorious whilst we are singing this is what I saw all of a sudden I saw an angel that came into the room and the angel said look so I started looking and all of a sudden I saw an army an army that have lined up lined up and they were marching into the camp of the enemy but they were singing this song they were singing the song that we were singing and the angel of the Lord told me that this is what happened during the days of Jehoshaphat I know some of you don't read your Bible and so you don't know he said this is what happened during the days of Jehoshaphat when God told Jehoshaphat that let the praise and worship team to go ahead and the angel told me he said the song that you are singing right now it is an anthem for the end time army it's an anthem for the end time army and he said as you sing it you are marching into the camp of the enemy and you are declaring that our God is mighty in battle you are declaring that our God is a victor our God has made us overcome our God has made us prevail our God has made us to overcome I am telling you it's, it's, listen you need to you need to see this you need to see this Jesus open their eyes to see I pray in the name of Jesus Holy Spirit just as Elisha prayed for Gehazi and said Gehazi may your eyes be open and Gehazi's eyes was open and he saw the armies of the Lord that have surrounded the Syrian army I pray tonight in the name of Jesus Jesus, let their eyes open and let them see what you are showing me right now. I am telling you, all of us, I see us like an army and we are singing this song and we are marching into the camp of the enemy, into the terrain, into the domain, into the kingdom of the enemy. And the angel told me, this is the anthem for overcomers. This is the anthem for victors. This is the anthem for conquerors. This is the anthem. And he said, this is how it happened. When God told Jehoshaphat, let the praise and worship them go ahead. And when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set an ambushment against the children of Ammon and Moab and Monser, which were come against Judah and they were smitten. They just sang victory songs about our God. They just sang victory songs about Jehovah and how mighty he is, how great he is in battle. And whilst they were singing and marching into the camp of the enemy, an angel laid an ambushment against their enemies. And by the time they enter into the camp of the enemy and the domain of the enemy, the enemy has been destroyed and killed. Listen, tonight, the same thing is happening right now. We are marching into the camp of the enemy. We are marching into the kingdom of Satan. We are marching into the underworld. We are marching into the terrain of the enemy. And we are taking back what they have stolen. We are taking back our destiny. We are taking back our joy. We are taking back our glory. We are taking back our blessing. We are taking back our ministry. We are taking back our elevation. We are taking back our health. We are taking back our family. We are taking back our marriages. We are releasing our children to excel, to succeed, to advance, and to progress. I want us singing from the depth of our heart this song. Lift up your hands as we sing in the name of Jesus. Mighty warrior, great in battle,
are walking into the court you sing this song into the court Jehovah is your name you are mighty in battle as you walk into the court that house that they are denying you of you walk into the house and you say Jehovah you are mighty in battle and Jehovah is your name that promotion that the enemy is denying and depriving you of you declare that God you are mighty in battle and Jehovah is your name Jehovah is your name. As you decree it, as you declare it, as you sing it, you possess it. You possess it. As you sing it, you enter into the camp of the enemy and you say, Devil, you have stolen from me for over the years and over the decades. But today I have entered with this anthem and I am collecting everything that you have taken. You are mighty in battle. Jehovah is your name. As you decree it, your marriage is released. As you decree it, your job is released. As you decree it, your sanity, your peace, your glory, your tranquility is released. Your happiness is released. Your manifestation is released. He's mighty in battle. He is everlasting king. He is the king of glory. The king of glory. The king of glory. He is the consuming fire. He is Yahweh. Jehovah is his name. The self-existed God. Elohim Adonai is his name. This battle is ended. I, I am declaring it. I am decreeing it. It is ended. It is ended. It is ended. Isaiah 21, the verse number 6. He said, Let the watchmen decree that which they see. It. I decree that which I see. It. This battle, this warfare, this struggle that you have been going through, this shame that you have been going through, this pain that you have been going through, I declare it is ended. It is ended. It is ended. For thus has the Lord said unto me, go, set the watchman, let him declare what is here. I declare miracle. I decree breakthroughs. I decree, I decree open doors. I decree testimonies. I decree peace. I release glory. I release manifestation. I release progress, advancement. I release marriages, promotions. I release joy, peace. In the name of Jesus, I decree what I see. I decree it. I decree it. This battle is ended. You won't fight this battle again. Tonight is ended. The voice of the accuser is silence. You have cried enough. You have wept enough. You have seen shame enough. You have seen reproach enough. You have been disappointed enough. You have been denied and deprived enough. You have been looked down upon enough. Tonight it is ended. I said 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 it is ended. I declare what I see. I decree what I see. Come out from the clutches of the enemy. Come out from the hold of the enemy. Come out from the grip of the enemy. Set and lose your hold. Set and take your hands off. Take and your hands off from God's people, from God's children, from their destiny, from their families, from their joy, from their peace, from their children, from their marriages, from this church. Lose your hold in the name of Jesus. I decree what I see. I decree what I see. 
I decree what I see. Hey, Matakabaya. I decree what I see. I decree what I see. I decree what I see. Tonight, I release judgment. I release judgment. I release judgment. I release judgment. I release judgment over the powers of darkness. I release judgment over the kingdom of darkness. I release judgment over every principality and power, over every demonic and satanic entity. I release judgment. I release judgment in the name of Jesus. I decree what I see. 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 That sickness now, 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 that disease, that affliction in your body, I decree, live now, 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 in the name of Jesus, I decree what I see. According to Isaiah 21, the verse number 6, I decree it. I decree it. The heavens that have been closed above you, I command the heavens open, 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 open heavens, 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 in the name of Jesus. Tonight I release your harvest. I release your harvest. You have been sowing. And you have been sowing. And you have been sowing. And you have been sowing. But the harvest is not coming. Tonight, let the harvest be released. A thousand times and more. 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 Let your harvest. Let your harvest. Let your harvest be released. Let your land be fertile. Let your land be fertile. Let your land be fertile. I declare, let tonight be the manifestation of prophecies, of prophecies, of prophecies over your life, over your destiny, over your ministry, over your calling, over your marriage, over your family, over your children, over your finances. Let there be divine manifestations, divine manifestations, divine Divine manifestations, divine manifestations, divine manifestations. I decree what I see. 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 You will walk out of here in the strength and in the might of Jehovah. You will walk out of here not as a chicken but as an eagle. You will walk out of here not as a chicken but as a lion. In the name of Jesus, 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 I decree a shift, I decree a shift, I decree a turn around, I decree a turn around, I decree a turn around. No longer will generational curses operate in your life, you will operate by generational blessings. In the name of Jesus, no longer, no longer, I decree a turn around, I decree a turn around, I overthink the tables of the enemy, I overthink the tables of the enemy, I overthink the tables of the enemy, in the name of Jesus, 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 name of Jesus. tonight I declare, you are moving forward, you have dwelt long enough at where you are you have dwelt long enough at this mountain rise up and move forward rise up and advance rise up and possess rise up and take over rise up rise up rise up and move forward the land is ahead of you the blessing is ahead of you the promise is ahead of you possess it possess it possess it possess it possess it possess it in the name of Jesus, come on, give the Lord a shout. You know.
Thank you for watching this message. For more information about this message or the ministry, call us at 770 or visit us online at eagleschapel.com.